All right, so we're about to start designing our drone and specking out some parts, but before we get to that, we need to thoroughly understand uh, thrust-to-weight ratios. And many of you may already be familiar with thrust-to-weight ratios, in which case I hope this serves as a fruitful reminder and refresher to your brains before we get into the design process. Um, if you're new to this, uh, watch the video, and if you have questions afterwards, just let me know, and I'll try to answer those as best I can. But let's jump into it. So thrust to weight ratios. Now, first off, these can also be called as TWR or T divided by W for shorthand. Understanding TWRs is very fundamental to being able to design drones. Let's kind of dive into what exactly thrust and weight are. So going back to physics class, uh, thrust and weight are just uh, different types of forces. And so a force, like let's just take this car for example, let's say it's in neutral. We have a, or a force of 10 newtons pushing to the right, and we have a, a force of 10 newtons pushing to the left. Um, under such circumstance, uh, the car won't move because the forces cancel out. And this is called a force balance. And this is a similar analysis that we will be using with our thrust to weight ratios. But first, let's kind of understand weight a little more intuitively. We all kind of have an idea of that, but we're going to take a technical dive into it. Uh, weight is a particular kind of force. Weight is an object's mass times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth in the metric system. And this is a downward force. So direction matters with forces, as we saw in the previous slide, because forces can cancel out. So our drone must be able to overcome its force and weight in the opposite direction in order to fly, foreshadowing this is going to be thrust. So if we have an 800 gram drone, its weight in newtons is going to be 0.8 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which will be 7.9 newtons. So our weight of an 800 gram drone is 7.9 newtons. But Newtons is kind of less intuitive than grams would be. And so in the drone community, uh, they, they kind of do a little bit of unit wizardry, wizard trickery. It's not technically accurate, but it is more intuitive. So on the left here, we have F equals mass times gravity, which it will um, give you units of Newtons. Uh, what the drone community does is they say, hey, gravity is constant in all over the world. Um, that's not actually technically true, but for simplicity's sake, gravity is constant. So let's drop the G, and let's just make force equal to uh, grams. So now, we can, when we're doing our force balances, we can just deal with grams instead of newtons, which is less intuitive. So back to our drone. Our, in the last slide, if um, its weight is 800 grams, we know we need an upward force that could lift more than 800 grams to lift off. So the other way of saying that would be you would need seven, um, more than 7.9 newtons of thrust in order to lift off. But, you know, who knows what 7.9 newtons looks like intuitively. And just wrapping up that last side, uh, for drone applications, we can think of thrust as the amount of mass that the motor prop combination would be able to lift into the air. So if a motor prop combination has a, a, a thrust of 3,000 grams, then it would be able to hover in the air while holding a 3,000 gram payload. Now that we got the technical semantics out of the way, let's get back into the TWR, the thrust to weight ratio. Um, so let's uh, use an example here and just look, um, here's an example picture. We have thrust going in the upward direction, thrust upward and uh, weight downward. Um, so an example would be we have motors that can produce 3,000 grams of thrust and this drone weighs uh, 1,000 grams. So how do we get our TWR? We divide 3,000 by 1,000 and so this hypothetical drone would have a thrust weight ratio of 3. So we must have more thrust than weight in order to fly. If you have a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1 to 1, then the drone is just going to hover in place because the weight isn't heavier than the thrust, and the thrust isn't heavier than the weight, and the drone is just going to hover in air. 
Now that we have some intuition for thrust to weight ratios and we know how to calculate it, let's get into some common thrust to weight ratios uh, seen in the drone community. So for FPV racing multirotors, they use very, very high thrust to weight ratios. Typical ratios could be four to one up to even 11 to one. But this is a pretty ridiculous thrust to weight ratio and these drones have been optimized for maximum thrust so they can perform their crazy maneuvers. For a normal drone, like having a thrust to weight ratio aiming for around two to one is a great number to aim for. Um, you can you can still fly a drone with a 1.5 to one ratio, 1.3 to one ratio, but this leaves little room for additional payloads should the need arise. So if you build a drone with a 1.5 thrust to weight ratio, and in the future you want to put a camera on there, well, maybe your drone doesn't have enough thrust in order to counteract the increased weight that would be added if you put a camera on there. But if you have a thrust to weight ratio of two to one, and you decide to put a camera on your drone later on, well, you have enough extra thrust um, on that drone in order to uh, furnish additional payload. So with a thrust to weight ratio of two, we put a camera on it, maybe it goes down to 1.5 to one, and we can still fly comfortably around. So it's kind of like future-proofing our drone should we have interest to modify our drone in the future. Okay, so now we know a lot about the thrust to weight ratio, and it is actually a very good starting point for our design process. So you won't know what your thrust is gonna be until you select motor battery prop combinations. But you don't know how much thrust you need until you know how heavy your drone is. So for that reason, the very first step in the design process is going to be to estimate the drone's total weight so that we can get our weight of the drone and we'll know how much thrust we'll need in order to get to our thrust to weight ratio goal. So in the next video, we're going to uh, show you how to estimate the drone's weight.